When it comes to studying, uh, I found out firsthand while I was in chiropractor school having to sit down in class all day long. Uh, the thing about bad posture here, in your neck, the, in the cervical vertebr vertebrae 3, 4, and 5 keep your diaphragm alive if you could remember that, right? So if you have more posture and you're doing this and studying and breaking your uh, head forward, it's really bad on that cervical area, which is where the nerve comes to power your diaphragm, okay? So the thing that I showed Ron here uh, is cueing your body, right? It needs something, as I always say, is brain-to-body communication. Here alone, go ahead and take a big breath from me, Ron. So here, right away, I see his chest elevate, okay? That's not how we're supposed to breathe, right? The, you're actually supposed to expand your diaphragm so that way the air is then forced up into your lungs, okay? So what we're gonna do here in order to get that brain to body communication and give your brain something to think about is I'm gonna have him put one hand on his belly button and one hand up on his chest, okay? And I'm gonna have him take another big breath in and see, so now here we can see the actual movements and he can feel where he's elevating first. Okay, so go ahead and exhale. Now I want you to inhale, but only focus on this hand on the belly button. So try to move this one up. Yep. There you go. Now, secondly, we saw this upper hand move this time. Okay, go ahead and exhale. So go ahead and do it again. Boom, boom, there it is. See, so that's how we should be breathing. Now it's gonna be pretty easy to do this laying down, but then the next step is to stand up and then try this again because you'll be surprised that once you stand up, you'll end up trying to inhale it uh, through your lungs again, okay? So you can give that a few tries and then once you wanna uh, step up a, a little notch, right, advance this, bring this hand now to the side and then this one to the side as well. Okay. Here, because your diaphragm is not only gonna expand forward, it's, it, it covers Basically, it's like a helmet over all your organs in here and glued up against your rib cage. Okay, if you can visualize that. And so it's not only supposed to expand in the front, it's supposed to expand even into your obliques. So now go ahead and inhale in and try to bring it into your hands now. The whole diaphragm. See, so even right before his hands expanded open, his chest elevated. So this is where he's going to have to work, right? I know we're just yeah. doing this right on, on the spot. So, you know, he, he has some... Memor memorization homework for his <laughs> diaphragm now, okay? okay. Um, but uh, you keep it there, right? And then you really want to advance it later on. You can, I, this is why I tell my clients, you can put an actual weight plate on your stomach. That's now resistance, right? Or you could even go into a pool, your, your tub at home if you can, uh, with a snorkel, right? And you're just inhaling forcefully through that water, um, through the, the snorkel, because that's going to be the resistance against your diaphragm that it's got to press against. So, uh, push, wait, breathe in, but make sure my hands are pushing on my stomach, because that means I'm using my, my diaphragm properly. Correct, but what they call it is therapy localization or TL, right? Um, and what it does is it makes your brain think like, oh, I have to go here like where you're holding it. Um, and so, we I, I know I just worked on it, but we could try a little bit of what's called neurokinetic therapy, which is like muscle testing. You wanna try it out? Sure. So a little example of therapy localization here is, um, go ahead and lock your hand. So, and the reason I'm going for the diaphragm, in the back, Back here, you have uh, you have many more other muscles, but the main ones are going to be your QL quadratus lumborum, your psoas, and your diaphragm. And behind, on the bottom of your cage, your rib cage, they all share some uh, fascial insertion sites there. And so I'm just going to test the psoas here real quick. I'm going to have you uh, just take off both hands here first. So I'm going to have you lock out your leg, hold it here, and I'm going to have you press diagonally towards the ceiling as I hold it down. Inhale and press on the exhale. So here he's pretty strong, right? So go ahead, inhale again on the exhale, hold it. So inhale, and then exhale, push. So here he can lock out. Okay, what we're gonna try now is his uh, his glute, right? Because your hip flex, or your major hip flex, which is that psoas. His glute here, now I'm gonna want him to try and use his glute to keep my hand down from pulling his heel up, okay? So inhale, and then on the exhale, press down. So first off, he inhaled through the chest, and second, he can't really hold his, the, the uh, glutes not wanting to fire off because the psoas is so stuck and overactive right now. So now, 
We're gonna do the TL, the therapy localization on his psoas here. Okay, and now inhale. And then, oh, so restart, restart, you press too early here. So exhale, let it out, okay. So now you're gonna inhale and then on the exhale, try and hold me down. So inhale, and then exhale. A lot more solid because now he's bringing awareness for his body to the psoas and in order for the glute to fire off. Okay, so this is called neurokinetic therapy, one of the other certifications I went through. Um, but that's just just to show you that brain to body communication is really important when it comes to mindful movement, mindful breathing, just being very aware of how your body moves. What is the what is the the like health benefits to breathing with your diaphragm? There, there's a lot, of course, it's going to be just more utilization of the oxygen we take in because we don't use all the oxygen we take in. Um, so that's going to help, like, especially um, since we train jiu-jitsu, you know, we're MMA fans. If you look at the Diaz brothers, they, um, there's something called the VO2, right? Your body's ability to actually utilize the oxygen you're inhaling. And so they're known for having gas tanks, right? But really what it is, they have a quicker recovery. So when that lactic acid is building up in your, in your system, the better you can use the oxygen you're inhaling and exhale it, the better off your body's gonna function and not burn out as quickly. So there's a, a benefit from the sports aspect, but just in general, breathing and keeping proper hydration um, will help all your organs function because your organs need oxygen as well. So better, better functioning for your organs. When you're doing sports, you're, you're gonna have better endurance. Now, to practice this, do you need to, like all the time when you're driving in your car or just be conscious uh, of it? So eventually, if you do this enough, as I said, um, we're supposed to be breathing through our diaphragm, right? Um, especially any yogis out there, diaphragma diaphragmatic breathing, di diaphragmatic, something like that. I can't really say it, but anyways, um, it's just, it becomes uh, instinctive, right? Because we're supposed to inhale, exhale through our uh, diaphragm. So it should get to the point where you don't have to think about it as much. Okay. And you said I should try this one standing up? Yep. Yeah. Okay. What else should we say about it? Anything to talk to you? Um, we're at about eight minutes, so. Okay, so I'm gonna lay down maybe once a day, right? Yeah. A minimum. <laughs> minimum once a day, and I'm gonna. How, how long do you think I should do it? Uh, until you get lightheaded, you know? <laughs> Until I get lightheaded. Yeah, you can look up uh, Wim Hof, Wim Hof breathing style, right? Technique. He's a real big uh, godfather of breathing, or the breathing movement right now, so he's really interested to look into. Um, he does 30 deep, big breaths like this as part of a warm up before they get really into their breathing stuff. So, do 30 of these. Yeah. Maybe at a, a, a decent pace. Yep. Even, even like as you inhale, slightly hold it, and then exhale through the diaphragm first as well too. Yeah. Do it 30 times, or until I get lightheaded, at least once a day. Uh, and look up William Hoff. I'm, I'm Wim, 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 Hoff. Wim Hoff. Yeah. He was actually on Joe Rogan, uh, like a like that breathing guy that you mentioned. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, all right, guys, so this is something that I'm going to practice uh, once a day until I get lightheaded. Uh, and I hope it's going to help my endurance in jiu-jitsu, but I also hope it's going to help my organs and my body, but I also hope it's going to help my brain because I want to memorize a lot more. Uh, follow Mike on Instagram, Mike Muscle Mechanic, Mike underscore Muscle underscore Mechanic. Uh, and put the link in the description below. And if you want to get my memory course, it will be in... Uh, the description below and uh, give us a, a comment a like thumbs up subscribe thank you <laughs> all right yeah see you on the next video okay, okay.